Now there are next door neighbours, so to speak, and many people living in our region will have family ties with Scotland. But after the general election, well, the political map of that country has been redrawn and the SNP, SNP swept to power. But what does this mean for us in the northeastern Cumbria? Well, over the coming weeks, our political reporter David Rhodes will be asking the question, Scotland and us, what next? This could be a familiar sight in nearly any Scottish community, but this pipe band is practising in the Northumberland village of Stannington. Wait! Mark! On my home country, from when I left, has changed hugely. There wasn't a unity when I left, and now all of a sudden there is a unite. There, you can feel it and you can see it. I still have family that live up in Scotland, so it's so much better. Most of these band members have some family connection to Scotland, a potent reminder of the cultural bonds that transcend the border. Oh, I think there'll always be a link. I don't, I don't, don't have Scotland went independent and, and if it didn't go independent, there'll always be a link. They'll always stay together as good friends. In 2010, Labour dominated Scotland like it did the North East and Cumbria. But now where our region politically remains red, the SNP have painted Scotland yellow, taking 56 seats out of a possible 59. Our region has a shared history with Scotland. Edwardian streets on both sides of the border would have looked similar to this one at the Beamish Museum. But now our two political futures appear to be diverging. We share a lot in common with Scotland and there's a common cause to be made with the north of England. But I think it's difficult in the current circumstances to see how we can thrive by working together when there are so many things pulling us apart. But what about those who are originally from the North East but are now living in Scotland? Last time we met Phil Carter, who's originally from Middlesbrough, he was voting in the country's independence referendum. Phil works in Edinburgh, so as the SNP have risen to power, has he noticed a change in Scotland's relationship with its nearest neighbours? It's been a big change, yes. I think previously not many people voted SNP, whereas now not only have a lot more people voted SNP, but people are proud to have voted SNP. That doesn't really have a negative effect for people from the north of England. I think there is a bit of friendly rivalry and banter there, but nothing else. The SNP have redrawn the political map here in Scotland and that will affect our future relationship with this nation. But what politics can't change is it can't change the cultural bonds or the family ties that run across the border, for they remain very much intact. And David joins us in the studio now. So David, general election nearly mm. a month ago, but this whole issue about our region's future relationship with Scotland, it's just not going away, is it? It's not, Jeff. Um, 56 SNP MPs now in the House of Commons. Lots of questions here in the North East and Cumbria. They've only been back a week in the House of Commons and our region's MPs are already raising the issue. Anne-Marie Trevelyan, the newly elected Conservative MP for Berwick, raised it yesterday in her maiden speech. She, um, she talked about how Berwick has changed hands 30 times between England and Scotland and she also pointed out to the SNP in a tongue-in-cheek manner by the way under no circumstances should they think about trying to retake Berwick anytime soon. Berwick upon Tweed, a town which has changed hands between England and Scotland many times over the centuries. It has remained firmly English since 1492 yeah, yeah, yeah. and continues to prefer that position in case members is opposite right, were right. experiencing any <laughs> accusatory impulses. <laughs> And in the coming months, we will hear more politicians mm. in Parliament, obviously talking about devolving further powers to Scotland. Yeah, we will. There's already a new Scotland bill. This will be brought through this Parliament. So what we can expect is we can expect MPs from the North East and Cumbria standing up and making speeches along these lines. Look, yes, Scotland is going to get more power. We accept that. But you know what? We want some devolved power. We want more power here in the North East and Cumbria. So, yes, we are going to see more MPs from our region making that very case. So this is your first in the series of reports tonight. More on this tomorrow? Yeah, we, tomorrow we're going to go into what exactly Scotland is going to get, what are they asking for, how is that going to impact us, and how do we respond? Big questions. David, thanks very much for that.